So I have a very rare and interesting horn uh, that uh, I just got, and um, before I demo it, I want to start with a with a story. Um, I was talking with a member of the Boston Symphony um, who got a Robert mouthpiece. Um, Robert's are golden era. People consider them Shedvels. I think the data's out on whether they're not uh, they're a real shed valve or not. Um, but they get a fantastic, brilliant um, French sound, similar to a great shed valve, a great Henri shed valve, think Harold Wright or, or Ralph McLean. And um, this person was saying that they didn't play it in the orchestra because they felt the sound was too small. Um, and I found that interesting. My experience playing a couple different Robert's in an orchestra was very similar. But then I found uh, an Henri Leroy, and Henri Leroy was a man who took over the Robert factory in um, 1918. He played for Mahler, who was the conductor of the New York Phil. And the Leroy mouthpieces, uh, I know a musician who uses one in the San Francisco Symphony, um, have a lot of the characteristics of a Robert, but have a bigger, broader sound, um, more American sound, easier to project. And I think that's where you see the difference between if you're talking 100% French or French influenced, but also American influenced. And I think you see this with Charles versus Henri Chedvel. You see this with Caspar using Chedvel blanks, but making an American sound. Um, and I think you see this with Bethany uh, using a Charles Chedvel blank. Uh, I believe Charles Shedwell finished some of the blanks, but a guy in America also modified them. And so it's really interesting to see pure French versus American. Um, so the interesting story is Robert Carré was the designer, credited as, as the designer for the R13. And it's interesting, Buffet says the R13 started in 1955. Well, I've measured Buffet's from 1955. Um, and they're straight bore horns. Stra 580 up top, 580 mid joint. Not a poly bore. I've tried 1956 horns, measured them straight bore. Um, 1957 is when I believe they finally got consistency for the polycylindrical bore for the American sound. Um, and I have a 1957 horn, and it's really fantastic. It's different than what we expect a horn to sound today, but it's a great horn. So apparently there were people in France that were not uh, happy or satisfied with those polycylindrical improvements that Robert Carré made. And he made it in part with uh, uh, input from certain American players. I've heard Robert Marcellus got one of the early prototypes, um, got a big, broad American sound. Um, I heard David Weber, I heard Stanley Drucker. Um, I've heard some other names too, and it would make sense that they well, that poly bore, big bore up top, small bore in the middle, gets the best of both worlds and can get a much bigger, more spinning sound. Um, so what I have is a Buffet S1 from 1973, and I also have an R13 from 1973, and both of these horns are very mint, very little playtime, very good uh, pad condition on both, and the tones are remarkably similar. Um, I do find that I can get a, a big principal clarinet sound. I'll start with the R13. This is a 132,000 serial. horns they're very similar to the late 60s horns and that's the horn I've been playing for about the last year or so is a 1968 um, and I feel that those horns are very able to play even in a modern ensemble very very easily but sometimes the tone is just so big sometimes it's harder to blend with your colleagues now the s1 
I believe came out around the same time as the very first RC. And these were horns more suited to please the French um, um, audience, uh, the French clientele, who apparently some were unhappy with the polybore nature of the R13. They wanted to go back to a small bore, which I can't blame them. Bonad played a small bore horn. Um, he apparently played roses, several roses, horns from the late 1800s, small bore buffets. Um, and uh, today you have the Buffet Tosca, which has a very small bore. So, to a festival. And a festival is kind of like a cross between an RC and an R13. Um, the difference is festivals get very loud, and this RC gets a nice chamber sound. If I compare it to an R13, it's clear how much more it flares out, and that reminds me of a festival or an RC. Um, the octave key feels like it's in a different place, and that's part of why the third tones sound different, but also the high C, that's a more compact sound. I'll try it on the 132 R13. By the way, that S1 is a 127,000, same year, 1973. So I'd say the R13 is more colorful. It has a bigger sound. The S1 has a more compact sound. Now, it's interesting because you take the R13 design from 1978 um, and you compare it 1968 through about 1975. The design doesn't change much. But if I compare it to a mid-60s buffet, these horns have actually even more focus. So this is an 81,000. This is similar to what Harold Wright played. He played 80,000 and 70,000 his whole career. Um, so I think the S1 was, and the RC were an attempt, as the wood started to get worse quality. I believe it was an attempt to bring focus back to the instrument. Um, and also to get rid of that big feeling that the French players of the time were opposed to, that, that bigger bore up top leads to a darker, broader sound, slightly more Germanic sound, which has dominated um, uh, sound today, the, the American sound concept of today. So I hope this has been interesting. And I, I played the, um, all these horns with their original uh, barrels. 
um, I'll, I'll leave you um, just with a little bit more of that S1. Um, so you hear just a little bit more of how different its character is. Um, and, and this one is in great shape. It's a little lighter than the Arthur King too, which is interesting.